Why don't they point their toes? <laughs> realizations today and this is probably the most annoying thing that you are going to hear at training the most annoying thing and the most frequent thing too um, and it's the reason of like why is she not pointing her toes why is she not straightening her knees what is wrong with her I'm gonna tell you a little secret there is nothing wrong with her she, she's not pointing her toes not because she doesn't know how but because we, as the coach, haven't taught her how to maintain pointed toes and knees. Um, she easily knows how to point her toes. You can just sit her down and ask her to point her toes for two, three seconds, and she will do so, and actually quite beautifully. But it's the question of, like, how do we get them to maintain that? How do we get them to maintain the execution and the extension? If we don't address this topic seriously, not only does this cause frustration from our behalf because we're sitting in the coach's chair and we're yelling point your toes straight your knees point your toes straight your knees um this yeah like it just doesn't lead to frustration on our behalf and impatience and intolerance um this just becomes a huge downside for the gymnast herself um she's gonna feel she's gonna start feeling demotivated she's gonna feel guilty um She's gonna feel annoyed, she's gonna feel upset because we're upset um, and eventually she's gonna start believing that she's not good at gymnastics and then the biggest thing happens, the catastrophe that happens is that she's at risk of leaving the sport and we do not need that, especially in Canada. So there's a lot of actually very deep issues behind this tiny tiny thing of unpointed toes, unstraighted knees. And I wanted to talk about the first thing. And the first question that we should ask is, the first question we have to ask is, what is the deeper issue? Um, as the coach, it is our responsibility to address reoccurring errors and mistakes from the gymnasts not just correct them and tell them to do it correctly that's not coaching coaching mainly happens here outside of the gym uh in the planning in the preparation in the an analysis of training in the development of further training that's where the coaching happens and a part of this analysis is why do they continue to have unawareness in their legs why do why are they not aware of their body um or if she never had that attention in her body how do we light that how do we spark that attention how do we bring awareness of her body so that it's programmed so that it's automatic and so that we can go forward so that we don't stay stuck on the pointed toes and straighted knees corrections that we actually continue forward and we're able to now move on to a correction like okay we've got that in green let's go okay let's try and get that leg higher let's try and get that position more beautiful what I hear a lot in my communication with coaches my observation of coaches and how they coach and the relationship they have with the gymnasts is that they make themselves believe that it's the gymnast's fault that she doesn't know how to point her toes. It's the gymnast's fault that she doesn't know how to use her body properly. And it's the gymnast's fault, period. And, you know, I want to tell you that that's a huge mistake in coaching. Because the fact is, is that when we're pointing the finger at you, when we're pointing the finger at her, there's actually three pointing back at us. 
and I'm here to tell you that it's actually something that we're doing wrong. Um, we've got to keep in mind that the gymnast, she's our clay, and we're the sculptors. And the way that she processes that information, the way that she is going to get that awareness of her body, is actually based on what we're doing from our behalf. Which exercises are we giving? A groundbreaking realization that I had is that the lack of attention in her legs means the lack of attention in her whole body. And hence, the lack of attention in her mind, and hence the lack of attention in you as the coach. She is not paying attention to what you are saying. As the coach, I as the coach, I lost her interest. Let me speak from my experience as coaching. Um, at one point in my relationship with this particular gymnast who does have this struggle, um, I lost the attention from her. Um, I've lost her interest in what I have to say in my corrections. She's off in her own world and she has chosen the path of selective hearing. Um, selective hearing is when one possesses the quality when they hear only what they want to hear or only what they would like to hear. Okay, so I'm going to put this into perspective for you. Imagine we're at the gym right now and you're my gymnast and I'm constantly yelling for the past two years or three years or however long I've known you for. And I'm yelling, point your toes, straight your knees, point your toes, straight your knees, point your toes, straight your knees, point your toes, straight your knees to everybody all the time. That phrase is going to lose its value because of how many times you've used it. It loses its value. The gymnast will stop seeing the importance of it. She begins to have the attitude of, I don't care. Corrections mostly become, point your toes, straight your knees. So, if this becomes something that's reoccurring, as the coach, we finally get to the point where we've got to move on, we've got to do our routines, we've got to practice our elements, whatever. Um, and she does her routine, and you can see that she, yeah, she's, her, her legs, her execution is not good. But she is catching, she is catching her risks, she's catching her masteries. So you decide to tell her, you know what, really good job, like really good job, but you didn't point your toes and you didn't straight your knees. Can you maybe do that next time? The response that that gymnast gets from those types of corrections is validation for incorrect technique. You just validated the fact that she didn't point her toes. You just contradicted every single thing that you said because your goal as the coach is for the girl to have clean legs. But because you gave her a good job anyway and she understood that, yeah, my knees and toes weren't pointed, but my coach said good job. The brain just begins to, um, again, have that acceptance and be like, oh, I guess it, it is okay to have not correct technique. Okay, because I still did a pretty good job. So the psyche registered, cool, not feeling my legs is okay because I got a good job anyways. So it reinforces a relaxed approach to training, a whatever approach to training. And this will contradict a lot of the effort that you put in as a coach. And it becomes this never ending loop. When you're fighting her brain, you're fighting what you put in yourself. And you're fighting yourself through her. You see, if you think about it, the legs are symbolic of what's going on in her head. The extension of the arms is symbolic of what's going on in the mind. Is she thinking about her body? Is she mentally present and aware? And if her arms are like this, or like this, and 
just like whatever you know you you like it's just symbolic of what's happening in the mind and it's just relaxed it's just eh, whatever whatever you know um i want to say a little blurb about kids in general um kids are extremely smart and intelligent to a certain degree i believe that they're smarter than us the speed at which they process information the speed at which they distribute that information into their mind like their brain is extremely efficient and effective they are able to distribute the corrections that we give as long as they have awareness motivation and intention behind every single movement that they do and it is our job as the coach to have the knowledge and be able to guide and direct as well as ignite that motivation in them to guide and direct them into the point of automatic thinking of belief of motivation of inspiration and then everything's going to be coming into life the gymnast becomes alive it's not dead right now the gymnast is dead like this she's dead she's a dead gymnast you need to bring her to life and with that comes the job as the coach i want to say something too given the fact that i just made this statement of how intelligent kids are it is not the gymnast's problem that she doesn't know how to point her toes although as the coach and i believe this in myself is that the ego gets in the way and this goes for any mistake any type of correction the ego really gets in the way of the process of coaching um let me explain a little bit more let me elaborate um if i'm constantly saying like she doesn't know how to point her toes she's stupid she's dumb she doesn't care um she doesn't know how to point her toes she doesn't know how to stop her arm she doesn't know how to use her body she's an unsuccessful gymnast um this is projection all of that is actually what i'm doing i'm not teaching her the correct technique i'm not planning training i'm not analyzing training at home seeing what the mistakes are seeing what the same mistakes are and developing a training program for the next few months for the next few weeks to fix those mistakes so that we can move forward but no we're going back and forth like this and this goes back to what i was saying earlier when you're pointing the finger at someone you're saying she 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 her 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 there's actually three pointing back at you and in this case there are a lot because there's so much responsibility as a coach okay so the solution to this is to ask why why is she still doing this mistake and it has nothing it actually it has nothing to do with age absolutely nothing to do with age i feel like there's some kind of stigma that you know oh they're only seven oh they're only six they're only nine they're only eight who cares what no that's the age that when you're supposed to like ingrain it into the head that she like that's the age when like the gymnast is being born because you try teaching you try teaching a senior level gymnast a habit that she learned extremely extremely young try fixing that it is the most tedious thing ever try teaching her to stop her arm to do chin up like this after doing this for 10 8 years try it's 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 horrid it's horrid type of work so that's why at 6 at 7 at 8 we have to build this foundation we have to build that foundation that there's no doubt whatsoever that she thinks for one moment that she can hold a dead arm. That any time my arms are to the side at training, it's like this. Period. We have to build that, we have to ingrain that, and that is our job. <sighs> um, so this kind of leads into part three, four, I don't know. I'm really just going crazy right now. 
The key word right now is why. Why is she not pointing her toes? Why has she lost attention? Why is she unmotivated? And when you ask those questions, you will realize that the answer always comes back to something that was in our control, something that was in our power to teach, and something that we didn't bring awareness to. How are we monitoring the training? Are we positively reinforcing her achievements and building that motivation? What is that approach to training? It's always something to do with us as the coach. Again, we are the sculptors and they are the clay. Psychologically, physically, and mentally and emotionally. Are we assigning the proper exercises to build those muscles that are needed? Are we spending enough time of our training, getting that endurance, agility, speed, focus, attention, motivation? Or are we just running routines sitting in the chair and screaming at them for when they don't get something right? There's a lot of, there's a lot of moral questions that can come from just the simple act of not pointed toes. Oh, so this has been a lot of information and it kind of leaves me into this um, point of like, okay, like, what do I do now? So at this point in time, I've understood that there's something that I've done wrong. There's something that I'm not dedicating enough time for outside of training. There's something that, you know, I'm not doing. It's, it's something on my behalf. The efforts are mine and the gymnast to share. She is putting in the effort. She's coming to training. That is her type of training. My effort is not just coming to training and sitting in the chair. That is not the effort that I'm talking about. The effort is the planning, the preparation, the analysis of mistakes, of things that are working, of muscle groups that I see are weak in my team of injuries that are happening in my team. Why are their hips hurting? Why is everybody's backs hurting? Um, <clears throat> so with that being said, there's a couple of things that we need to do in order to get that automatic response of the legs. Um, first, let's identify the goal. So the goal is to have automatic bodily memory, muscle memory, and ingrain it into the innermost parts of the gymnast that she needs to have straight knees and pointed toes. Point blank period. And now the question is, how do we do that? Um, so it's 2020. There's Instagram, there's Facebook, there's YouTube, there's Vkontakte, which is what I call Russian Facebook. Oh my god, there's documentaries, there's movies, there's everything, there's books, there's podcasts, there's so much information, there's so much information. And as a young coach, it's so overwhelming because I just, I don't know, I don't know. But as I'm growing older and as I'm becoming more experienced and gaining experience in this field, um, is the fact that we have to be careful which exercises we're choosing from Instagram and from YouTube. There's a lot, there's a lot of exercises, there's a lot of different types of warm-ups, different types of combinations, different types of approaches to training, you know. Um, which one do I choose? You know, that is the most prevalent question. How do I know what I need? Um, if you introduce extremely difficult combinations and exercises during your warm-up, during your training, just boom like that. The gymnasts, they're, the gymnasts, they're gonna get demotivated. It's too difficult for them. They don't know how to just hold straight arms. Why are we adding a club and a rope and a ball and a tennis ball here? Like, why? Let's first get down to the basics. Let's first, let's take a year 
one year to execute the most basic thing, but perfectly. You can take a year, you can take a month, you can take a week. That's up to you. Um, how much time are you, how much time do you have on your hands? Um, how, how fast do you think you're a gymnast learn? You have to look at your team right now. Who is your team? What are they, what are they good at? What are their assets? What are their defects? Do some of them have extremely high jumps or are some of them extremely flexible, but don't know how to hold their leg up? What you need to get down to, what are the root problems? You know, um, for, for example, uh, a lot of, you know, a lot of people in Canada, they struggle with the execution. Um, personally, I find though, a lot of us struggle with execution, with knees and toes and elbows and arms and everything. Um, so little by little, you take a little exercise here, simple, but effective. And you can personally design it. You can edit it a little bit. You can make it a little bit harder. You can make it a little, little bit easier for them. But you have to fit it under who you have on your team. Not who Irina Vidar has on her team. Not who Vera Shatalina has on her team. But who do you have on your team? And what are their strengths? And what are their weaknesses? And work from there, you know? Don't, like, don't bring in a whole bunch of different exercises and throw it at them like this, and then get upset and hopeless that they don't know how to do it. Well, of course they don't know how to do it. But it's your job to do it little by little, to teach them, to teach them and to show them, explain to them, and then, when they see that they start actually getting it you have a better mood you know you're going from training and you know what yeah they did a good job today you know i can see that we are progressing forward the fact that you're moving forward the fact that we're all moving forward you're going to leave training and you're going to feel so fulfilled you yourself are going to be motivated as the coach we are the primary motivators okay we are the primary motivators to them we are the ones that they look up to right now in training for that nod of the head. Good job. We are the ones that are giving that to them. And we have to reinforce that positivity. We've got to reinforce the fact that they are doing a good job with what they're being given. Motivation is directly correlated to how much one believes in themselves. Do I believe that I can do it? If the answer to that question is yes, then I will have the motivation. You know, you know, gymnastics is changing. The times have changed. It's not the Soviet Union anymore, where we got to stretch them like this and pull their legs to their ears like that. Like, that's like the time has changed. We got to We got to The kids are evolving themselves and we have to evolve, too. We have to be underneath them and help them to the best of their ability, to the best of what they understand, how do they like to receive information? We got to know ourselves. A huge thing that I really wanted to talk about is that we got to point out their achievements um, to everybody equally. In the whole week of training, each gymnast should get one to two uh, positive remarks like extreme like stop the whole team and just everybody look at her or for example uh, we have to positively reinforce that into the gymnast we have to because without that belief in oneself we have nothing we have nothing to build on are we breaking the gymnast or are we building them but that's for another episode so I'm gonna finish there thanks for watching and please leave me a like subscribe and a comment if you found this video helpful if you want to continue going with this anything that you guys want me to talk about and i'll leave it there thanks for watching